Now let me be perfectly clear. I only watched Interspecies Reviewer because I was curious. I was curious what was so bad about it that Funimation had to straight up cancel it. Yeah, if you've been keeping up with things, you've probably heard about this. But there's this new show airing this season that was licensed by Funimation. They even started to uh, simul dub it. And just the other week, all of a sudden, they, uh, they yeeted it away without pretty much any explanation. Like, people had to reach out to them to figure out why they couldn't watch their good old interspecies reviewer anymore. And they said they removed it because it basically broke their terms of service. It went against their values as a company. So after checking it out, I can 100% see why. But anyway, the reason that this was such a big deal, the reason it's so funny, is just the fact that Funimation had it in the first place. Like, they were dubbing it. They knew what this was. I'd imagine it was probably Sony who came in and shut it down, but still, <laughs> it didn't just suddenly start violating your terms of service at episode 4. But anyway, yeah, the reason for all of this, of course, this show is porn. It's no hardcore porn. From the first episode I watched, like, there was no penetration, or at least none shown on screen. This is essentially about a group of dudes in a fantasy world who are traveling around to brothel districts on a quest to have sex with succubi of every single species and review their experiences. And, uh, yeah, it was about as bad as you could expect. I watched the Funimation dub, because <laughs> honestly, like, why wouldn't you? Like I said, it's, it's schlock. It's, it's porn. Obviously, there are some people who are going to get something out of it. But, you know, if I want to get a good story out of my porn, I'll, I'll stick with the good old classics. We do have a couple lemon whores in this, in this community. Hey, has it been about 10 seconds since we looked at our lemon tree? Hey, what the fuck? Anyway, that was an odd introduction to the 2020 anime video. Hey, here we are, everyone. Brand new decade, some brand new anime to talk about. But, of course, first we have all of the things that carried over from the last decade. If anyone has the nerve to comment that the decade doesn't actually start until 2021 because there was no year zero. Hi, Hero Academia. This has been an odd season. Yeah, you know, I really, really like the overhaul arc in the manga. But for whatever reason, it did, they didn't do a fantastic job translating it over to anime. They really sped up the pacing, which I thought I would like, but it honestly ended up feeling a bit awkward. The main reason though is the animation quality in this first core of the season really, really dipped. Were there some great moments? Yes, there were some fantastic moments, and especially near the end, we got one of the best looking episodes of the show. But all the stuff in between, like the Red Riot fight, as a manga reader they were disappointing to me, the Lemillion fight. What even was that? It's hard for me to say I didn't enjoy it because I, I do really like the source material, I like, the, I like the stuff they're covering, but it just felt like a very lackluster adaptation to me. All that being said, I am still really looking forward to this second core. The first few episodes have been really good. I really enjoy the Culture Festival arc, but more importantly, it seems like we do have confirmation that after the Culture Festival, we're getting get one more arc before the season ends. And I am so excited. I hope to God they saved up their resources for this, because it is going to be excellent. Q is back after a four year wait. Wowzers. I've talked recently about how Haikyuu is like the only big current Shonen Jump series that I haven't checked out yet because I'm just not really interested in sports. Well, actually, all of that has changed now because I now consider myself to be a top tier Haikyuu stan. I've only seen season one, but I have to say, wow, <laughs> that was actually excellent. I, I am shocked with how much I enjoyed the first season of Haikyuu. So I am 100% going to keep watching, and when I'm caught up to the anime, I'm probably gonna go ahead and read the manga. The characters were just so much fun, the games were so engaging and intense, I didn't think I would be, ever be so excited for a sport I really don't care about. And the production value was so good, and people say, like, the animation in season one is just average compared to what's about to come. So now season four is finally airing, I am kind of glad that I started getting into the series now, so I didn't have to wait, you know, four years for, for this season. But yeah, pe people are continuing to love it. I'm all for it. Fuck yeah, man. <laughs> Usual garbage is still airing. We really, really nothing to say. I am genuinely curious though, for all of you who at least know what's up with the Black Clover anime, how close are they to catching up with the manga? Because I looked up a filler chart. I expected there to be a lot of filler in Black Clover, but there's actually almost none. And with like 120 episodes now, I'm really curious how close they are to catching up to the manga and what they're going to do when they, when they get there. Unless they're pulling a One Piece and just adapting it super slowly, which I don't really think they are, because I haven't heard many people say that they are. But, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm just curious, let me know. <laughs> As for new stuff, we have Somali and the Forest Guardian. This was the first new show of the year I watched, and man is it cute. This is a very, 
very wholesome story. It's about a forest guardian, a golem, someone who, you know, he chills in the forest, he makes sure everything's going fine, but one day, he runs into Somali, a human girl who seems to have been abandoned, and he decides to journey with this girl to try and find other humans to take her in. But the problem is, like, humans aren't really well liked in this world, you know, that they're kind of a delicacy. So he disguises her as a minotaur. They gotta be careful. They run into to a bunch of colorful friends. I, I've, I've only watched two episodes so far, but it was really enjoyable. The art is gorgeous. Really, really nice looking show. I mean, the animation is just fine. It, it doesn't seem to be an action show. Not many crazy things are happening, but it's just a very pleasant watch. I'm a little concerned though. It, this is a scene in series and it, I just can't help but draw comparisons to Made in Abyss. So I really hope to God that these two make it out okay. ID Invaded. This was, this was something. This is a science fiction crime thriller, but it's unlike any science fiction crime thriller I've ever seen. It takes place in a world where when people are, are tracking down the killer, they use this device to basically analyze their intent to kill. Then they can use that data to create a virtual portrait of the mind of the killer. Then they send a detective in the mind and they figure stuff out to track down the killer. It's all very weird, but I won't lie and say it's not engaging. The show starts off with one of the main characters, you know, first entering the mind of the killer and when he does this, he actually loses his memory. So he wakes up in this weird abstract world and you have no clue what's going on. <laughs> and, and as you see him piece it together, and then eventually we find that he's in the virtual world. It was all really cool. Like the first two episodes show them tracking down this one killer. It was all pretty engaging stuff, not gonna lie. It's definitely not gonna be for everyone. It, it has an extremely out there premise. Well, I did think it was pretty good and I'm definitely going to be watching more. So next up is Toilet Bound Hanako-kun. For a series with a name like that, this is probably as good as it possibly could have been. This is a manga that has gotten a lot of praise. A lot of people really, really love this series. And based on the first few episodes I've seen, I can definitely see why. This one takes place in the haunted school where you have Hanako Kokun, who, who is a, a toilet demon, basically. He lives in the toilet of the girl's washroom, and he's sort of a legend around the school. People know that if you go to Hanakun's bathroom stall, he'll grant you a wish in exchange for something. So our main character, this girl who wants to see if the legends are true, goes to meet Hanakokun, and shenanigans ensue. You find out that the school is full of spirits, or apparitions as they call them. They're all up to all sorts of mischief. The problem, though, is that sometimes they can go a bit too far, and that's why Hanakokun is there to keep them in check. Now, this isn't a serious show at all. It's very much a comedy series. It has a very unique aesthetic. I really love the art style. I mean, it's very, like, chibi, but the art direction, the colors, all very nice. This is just another pleasant watch. I mean, people really, really love this manga, so I, I am expecting some, some pretty great things out of it. But yeah, as of right now, really cool. We've been too positive. Time to talk about some garbage. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even finish Darwin's game. I, although I didn't even really watch... I sort of skimmed Darwin's game. <laughs> After a certain point, I was like, ah, oh, no, this, this is not for me. This is like some weird, like, pseudo-isekai. It's isekai, but not really. I sign up for this game, Darwin's game, and it's like a deathmatch. You get instructions and powers from your cell phones, and you gotta, you gotta battle royale everyone. I don't know the history. I don't know if this was a manga or a light novel or whatever, but it really seems like it's trying to cash in on the trend. A trend that has kind of been dying out. And yeah, I just found this one incredibly boring. <laughs> I, I did like the death scenes, just how ridiculous they were. Like someone's throat would get cut, nothing would happen, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> they would just like explode with blood. That was supposed to be like really intense and scary, but I, I, I actually laughed out loud when those things happened. So yeah, Darwin's Game, not for me. And that'll do it for this video. A pretty solid season of anime. The, not, nothing too crazy, but there are a lot of... <laughs> Keep your hands off Aizuken. Now right off the bat, all eyes were on this show because of their director. Uh, Masaki Yuasa, I believe his name is. I haven't seen many shows from this guy, but the shows that he has made are very, very acclaimed. And now, keep your hands off Aizuken. A show about three high school girls who start an anime club. But not just like a, but not just like, like an anime viewing club, a club where you talk about anime. Like, they are actually producing hand-drawn anime. And we're just taking on a crazy journey throughout their imaginations. We learn about their inspiration for making anime, their, their process of making it. Like, this is such a love letter to the medium of animation. Like, they go, like, full-on classic hand-drawn cell animation stuff. Like, Asakusa and, uh, Mi Mi Miyuzaki, whatever her name is. It's like, they're so passionate about their work, and the show just does, like, such a good job of portraying everything. <laughs> then you have their other friend, who is hilarious. Like, she does not give a shit about anime. Like, she's only 
only in this because she sees profit in it. And you have like all these other people in the school who just think like, oh, this is a huge waste of time. We want to shut them down. They butt heads a lot. It's just, it's so enjoyable. The production value is through the roof. It looks absolutely excellent. Just the design of the school. I mean, it's just a high school, but so much love and care went into it. This is based off a of manga, so I'm sure a lot of the credit lies there, but I really can't see the manga being the superior version this time around, where it's just so focused on the medium of anime and how it is brought to life so brilliantly. This is really, really a special show, and I cannot recommend it enough. Easily the best show I've seen this year so far, and honestly, it's so good that it may end up very high on my top 10 list at the end of 2020. So yeah, winter 2020, off to a pretty damn good start if I do say so myself. I hope we're not peaking early, like I hope this isn't the best season of the year because there's a lot of great stuff down the pipeline. But yeah, some really good shit. So with that, thank you all so much for watching. You can leave uh, all the stuff you're watching in the comments below. Let me know if I missed anything and I'll see you all very soon. Uh, where we, I know we just did one, but we gotta, we gotta go back to Shonen Jump for a bit because a whole bunch of new shit just started and we, we gotta take a look at that. Yeah.